My name is Dr. Alan Stewart, and I am the Chief of Cardiac Surgery for HCA Florida. Uh, I've been in practice for about 16 years. Now I practice in Miami. During the scope of my career, I've done approximately 5,000 open heart surgeries. I've operated on professional athletes that have gone back to playing professional football. I have done the New York City Marathon with patients that have had aortic surgery, and I encourage that, and I run with them to show them that it's safe. Despite our commitment to exercise, heart valve disease can affect people who are physically fit. What manifests in symptoms is the same level of exercise causing more shortness of breath or more fatigue. If someone typically exercises and does a 45 minute spin class uh, and they can't keep their same pace, not just once or twice, but week after week, that may be a sign that there's something wrong. If they can keep their pace, but they're tired uh, or exhausted after exercising and it just doesn't recover, and they find they're going to sleep earlier and earlier, that may be a sign. Maybe they're carrying a little extra weight because they've got more water uh, in their system because their body is over-circulating fluid. These are subtle little signs when you know your body and you know your exercise tolerance. One can't reverse structural heart valve disease. It doesn't get better on its own. What we're watching for is to hit the metric where we believe that surgery gives a much better outcome and quality of life than continued medical management. We've traditionally done that by routine follow-up, uh, by an echocardiogram that's done every few months uh, at intervals uh, that your doctor chooses. Depending upon what type of valve disease you have, you can or cannot optimize yourself uh, before surgery. Severe aortic stenosis is something that really you can't uh, exercise away. Uh, and what I mean by that is that there's a fixed obstruction at the top of your heart. To exercise and sweat and become dehydrated will make you feel worse. To try and lift heavy objects can put more blood pressure against your valve make you feel worse. So there's not really much that can be done before surgery uh, for aortic stenosis, but there's a lot that can be done afterwards to facilitate your recovery. Mitral valve disease is quite different. Mitral valve disease, as long as your heart rhythm hasn't changed, meaning you haven't had atrial fibrillation, and you have mild to moderate leakage of your valve, you can exercise uh, without much restriction. Specifically aerobic exercise, you can get your heart rate up. One of the other areas, and, and uh, an area of interest to me, is uh, congenital aortic disease, meaning that uh, a weakness in the first portion of the aorta, uh, what's called an aortic root aneurysm. We can make those worse by heavy weightlifting, and by massively increasing the pressure in the aortic root by deadlift, squats, bench press, uh, that can precipitate both the valve leaking more and the aorta dissecting or tearing. Cardiac surgery, uh, in my mind, is a reset button. Uh, it is a moment in time where we can correct a problem, whether that problem is acquired or that problem is genetic or congenital, uh, and it can be fixed. And the goal is to fix it in a curative manner so that we can go back to living our best life. A properly done valve operation, the person should be able to go back to exercise without restriction. So when we do minimally invasive surgery, we use this little titanium plate. The breastbone is not opened and minimizes pain and they take less narcotics. My best piece of advice for folks who have heart valve disease are to one, uh, not panic and put their shoes on the shelf, uh, to realize that surgery may be in their future, get a number of opinions uh, from people who specialize in structural heart uh, disease to find out, well, what type of exercise is right for me. In most cases, I would say that running and swimming and biking are all going to be okay as long as it's moderate disease. Leading up to surgery, I would say pay attention to aerobic activity, uh, to things like yoga and stretching and flexibility exercises, uh, and then afterwards have a plan in your mind that precedes surgery of what your goals are after surgery. So have your plan in place ahead of time.
Hi, everybody. It's Adam. I hope you enjoyed that video. And don't forget, you can always subscribe to our YouTube channel. Watch the next two educational videos coming up on your screen or click the blue button to visit parkvalvesurgery.com.